The Russian city of Volgograd has been hit by a second bomb attack in two days. At least 15 people have been killed by an explosion on a trolley bus. It comes after 17 people were killed in a suicide bomb attack at Volgograd train station on Sunday. Well, Fred Weir is a journalist with the Christian Science Monitor and joins us now from Moscow via Skype. Fred, welcome to the programme. Uh, is there any doubt in your mind that the people behind today's attack and yesterday's attack uh, are the militant fighters from North Caucasus area? No, I, I don't think there can be any doubt about that. Um, this is this is not a new phenomenon in Russia. It comes and goes, and it's obvious that the imminence of the Sochi uh, Olympic Games has created a, a huge opportunity for them, and that they have launched a campaign to disrupt those games and humiliate Russia. And uh, as we know, this is the third bombing of the transport system in Volgograd in the last two months. Why Volgograd? Why is that city being targeted? Well, it's um, it's a, it's an important Russian city. It's it's a famous one. It, it was Stalingrad in World War II, and it's, so it's associated with the extraordinary heroism of the Soviet army. Uh, but I think the main significance of Volgograd is that it isn't uh, Moscow or Sochi, which you would think of as the primary targets of these people. Um, and there are two theories about why that might be. One is that uh, Russian security perhaps has made those two cities impregnable to terrorists. Um, <clears throat> and, and so they're uh, going at a softer secondary target. Um, the, the other theory, uh, more chilling, is that this, these are diversionary raids. Um, they're meant to distract uh, Russian security, to make them divert their resources, to sow uncertainty in advance of some big attack that they have planned. Yeah, and we know that the Chechen rebel leader Doku Umarov has promised to use maximum force to, to disrupt the, uh, the Winter Games. If there is any kind of incident at the Winter Olympics in Sochi. How damaging is that going to be for the Russian government and for Vladimir Putin? Well, um, obviously, it's it's extremely damaging, um, and and it's it's of course it's it's a blow against the whole world because we we did trust Russia to host these Olympic Games, and they. To trying, uh, but Russia has these huge unresolved problems, including this ongoing insurgency in the North Caucasus, which is adjacent to to Sochi. Um, and if these problems reach out and and disrupt the Olympics in such a way, obviously it's it's just going to be uh, incredibly uh, embarrassing for for Putin and and for Russia. Fred, can I ask you what is the, the general feeling in Moscow about Putin's policies towards uh, Chechnya and that whole region. I mean, he's tried to lock down Chechnya with his, uh, his own man, who, who's, who's called a, a Kremlin puppet, installed uh, as the leader. But then you, you've seen the attacks in Volgograd. We've seen previous ones, like the, uh, the Moscow theater siege, the, the Moscow subway bombing. Uh, d does that demonstrate, perhaps, that Putin's policies are failing? I think it does. Um, Putin has, uh, by, by installing this local dictator uh, in Chechnya, he has pretty much pacified Chechnya. But the North Caucasus is a much wider region. It em em embraces about seven Muslim, mainly Muslim, uh, inhabited republics. Uh, they're all desperately poor places, um, destabilized, uh, um, run by corrupt local governments. And there is a, a, a metastasizing insurgency throughout the region. Uh, Chechnya is no longer the center of it. It's, it's places like Dagestan and Ingushetia, which where the uh, rebels are, are headquartered and, and have the most uh, recruiting ability. Fred, interesting to speak with you. Thank you very much indeed for that. Fred Weir speaking to us there from Moscow.